a very warm welcome to everyone to this live webinar. I'm very excited for this. I'm very excited for Oliver Lively, our content partner manager, to show you um, one part of our solution. Luber Nimbus is our product. Enterprise routing is uh, like the module that he's going to give you a bit of an insight today. Um, so without further ado, um, Oli, thank you very much. And I will hand over to you. And I'm excited to see this demo of yours. Great. Thanks very much, Melina. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining. Hopefully, the weather's as sunny as it is here for everyone else. Um, so I just got a couple of slides before we start off with the demo, just to kind of give you some context and some background as, as to uh, what our Nimbus solution is and specifically the enterprise routing uh, module. Um, so Nimbus is our uh, customer service platform and it's built exclusively uh, for Microsoft Teams. OK, so it's designed to fulfill a variety of different customer service related requirements and, and roles uh, throughout the business with, with one application uh, with different modules within that application. So uh, today we're going to be focusing on the advanced and enterprise routing modules, but I just wanted to quickly um, outline some of the other modules um, that might also pique your interest or, or kind of be useful to your to your businesses. So um, yeah, the advanced and enterprise routing modules really what these are designed to, to do is to uh, meet that gap where we have between Microsoft Teams and the functionality uh, available out of the box with Microsoft Teams and then your full blown uh, traditional contact center. And what we've really found is that there seems to be quite a common use case within organizations where um, users or businesses can benefit from some intelligent call routing, some CRM integrations, uh, some reporting, some live data, some historical data, um, but don't necessarily need all of the traditional contact center functionalities and also don't have the budget to, to pay for a, a, a top level contact center. So that's really where um, we're, what we're trying to do with advanced enterprise routing is, is meet that gap. We also have the uh, the contact center license here. This is for those more traditional contact center environments and we will be doing uh, future webinars and demonstrations of this platform where you need things like more traditional skills based routing, article wrap up time, and more customized dashboards. Okay. We then have our add on modules. So we've got the attendant console, which is our reception or operator switchboard uh, software. So we will be doing a, um, a webinar on this in a couple of weeks time. So if you're interested in seeing a demonstration of that platform, um, yeah, please register for that. Uh, we've got Interact. Um, this is built on Azure communication services. This is a way of bringing um, external and um, web uh, interactions and communications in from your website into Teams. So a visitor to a website can go onto your website, um, start a voice call, a video call, chat within that video call and share their screen all from within the website um, directly to end users and teams. And then, of course, we have our recording platform, uh, which allows for, for recording within teams. We can record voice, but we can also record video meetings. We can record chats and any other um, kind of communications within teams. OK, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavor to the to the uh, capabilities of Nimbus in general. But but today we'll focus on the, the, the enterprise and the advanced routing uh, modules as those kind of are our key um, modules there. Just to just to give you a high level overview of how we're actually integrating into Teams. So there are lots of um, different ways to to integrate a contact center or phone system solution into Teams, but they're not all all the same. OK, um, our kind of philosophy at Luware is, is to integrate as natively as possible to give the best experience to both the users uh, and the other users um, within an organization. So. Um, we're totally agnostic in terms of how you deliver your calls to Teams. So there are obviously a variety of different methods here. So you can use, choose direct routing, a managed SVC solution, calling plans, Operator Connect. We have lots of great partners who, who offer um, the, the services in this area. We only pick the call up once it's delivered to Teams. OK, so we use the Microsoft APIs to essentially uh, distribute and, and give more intelligence to Teams voice calls. OK, so once the call is in your Teams environment, we then overlay this additional functionality here that we discussed on the previous slide um, to give to enhance the calling experience and enhance the customer service available within Teams. OK. So without further ado, um, I'll now jump into uh, Microsoft Teams and show you in action how, how um, Blue and Nimbus operates. So um, I'm in my Microsoft Teams desktop app here. 
Um, I can also access Nimbus um, through my Microsoft Teams web app and I can answer calls via my Teams mobile app as well. So I've got all my normal applications that I'd expect to see here. And then we've got Lua Nimbus as another app pinned to our taskbar. So when I come into um, Nimbus, I'm greeted by this personal overview. Um, I'm going to split this demo into just uh, three sections. So I'll start with the, the core user experience. So what the user sees, how they handle and answer calls. They'll then move on to some of the reporting capabilities, both live and historical. And then we can finish with actually how, how we allow you to be very flexible with how you build these call flows and call queues. So starting with this uh, dashboard, this is an overview for the individual agent or the end user. We want to give that end user as much visibility as possible of their live activity, but also some of their key metrics and KPIs. So they have some more responsibility. Okay, so in the top left here, we have my queue. This will show us any live calls that are currently waiting in the queues that I'm logged into. So I can see here the source of that call. If we recognize the source, then we'll be able to display the name of that caller if we have that integrated with a CRM or database system like Bill Knight here. We'll show you the service name, so that's the queue name. And then we'll also show you how long they've been in the queue. And if we have pickup enabled, I can manually cherry pick these calls straight out of the queue in any order that I like. My services here, this is gonna show me the queues that I'm assigned to or the, the call groups that I'm assigned to. And here I'm easily able to log in and out of these. OK, so I can make myself active, inactive in multiple or just single groups here. And then I'm also able to make an outbound call on behalf of these queues. OK, so if I want to make a call that isn't coming from my DDI, but it's coming from the queue instead, I can search any name or number here. This will search any linked address books that I have, whether that's uh, internal AD users or any external address books. Or I can use the dial pad to make that call and essentially select which CLI I want to present on the outbound basis. OK, top right, we have some key metrics around my day. You can see it hasn't been a busy day for me so far. I've accepted two calls, declined zero, and I've had one call going to, to Rona. Now, accepts and declined are pretty self-explanatory, but we do track um, Rona calls. And, and that's an interesting metric for a lot of our customers because it attracts the calls that have been delivered to an agent uh, because they're logged into the queue and they're available. And then for whatever reason, that agent has decided not to I'll answer the call and then it's bounced on to the next available agent. So it's essentially an ignored call. Okay, so we track ignored calls as well as declined calls. And then I can see at the bottom here, these are some key SLAs for myself personally. So I can see my average ring time, my average connected time, and my average acceptance SLA. So this is giving me some visibility and responsibility of my personal uh, performance. Before moving on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop Nimbus out into its own window here. So it also always suggests popping this out, just like you can pop a Teams chat out or a Teams video meeting out into its own window. I've just popped Nimbus out into its own window. So we're still natively embedded within Teams. We're just in our own window now. The next view I'll show you is the My Sessions dashboard. And this is the view that I probably spend most time in if I'm handling calls on a regular basis. OK, so. Along the left hand side here, we can see all of my historical interactions. So I can see the calls that I've accepted, declined, um, the ones that have gone to, to Rona, those orange ones. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a live call in with my with my mobile and show you how we actually handle that call and show you the, the agent experience there. So I'm going to put this Welcome call into the UK queue. Yeah. Okay, that call should come through. Give me one moment. I'm just going to check that there's nobody else logged logged into the queues. I'll log John out in case that call's going to him, and then I'll put that uh, call through again. So I'm just in my agent dashboard here. OK, so um, I put a call through to the UK line. That call is distributed to me um, as a user here. And the way this call is distributed is exactly the same way as any other Teams call would be. OK, so it comes in as a Teams call pop up. I can see before I even answer that call which queue it's coming in from. I can see it's coming in from the UK queue. So I'll hit answer here. Put myself on mute and now i'm just in a native team school okay so in terms of actually handling that call 
that then if users are familiar with using Teams, then they should be very familiar with actually handling that call. And now I'm in this Teams call, I can do everything that I can do with any other Teams call. I can transfer that call, I can consult and transfer, put that call on hold. I could add people into this call, whether they're internal or external. Okay, so all of that uh, native Teams functionality remains. We also have a very interesting use case that a lot of customers um, are, are experiencing with um, internal help desks. So if you have an internal IT help desk, for example, then any user in Teams can call the queue internally. And if it's an internal call, so if it's from an internal user, then when that person answers, they can use the camera, they can use the screen share. So for something like an IT help desk where they need to help um, uh, fix something on, on their screen or even fix something physically, they can just turn on the camera and then they can help them across that session. Okay, so we maintain all of that Teams functionality. In addition to that, with the My Sessions dashboard here, you can see I've got the live call flashing green. Immediately, I can see the name of that caller and we're getting that information from an integration we have with Salesforce in this instance, but we can integrate with with hundreds of CRMs um, using Microsoft Power Automate as our, as our connector there. So here I can see the, ne the name of the caller. In this caller information tile here, I can actually see some more information from Salesforce about this caller. So I can see where they're located. I can pull through their email address, their phone number. I can see how long they queued for. So if that caller did queue for a long time, then I can maybe acknowledge that and thank them for waiting. And then if I want to see some additional information about that caller, what I can do is I can press this context button here and then I'll show you my, um, my browser. And what that's doing is it's loading uh, the relevant Salesforce record to that caller straight away in my browser. So I can see that the contact record for this caller in my browser, I can see all of the historical activity here. What we've also got logged here automatically is every time this caller comes into Nimbus, it's going to automatically log a task here with that name of that caller and the name of the queue. So I can see every time that caller comes in, it's going to automatically log the task. So as an agent, I don't have to manually remember uh, to, to log that task there. And I get an immediate call history right inside of Salesforce. OK, so we've got the, um, the codes at the bottom here. So these would traditionally be known as, as uh, disposition codes or, or completion codes. OK, so this is to give more um, data uh, about the calls that are coming through and to actually provide some reporting on, on what these calls are, are about. So you can define what's listed here in the drop down. So I could say, OK, the primary reason for that person calling, they were an existing customer. And then the outcome of that call is they, they raised a new requ request there. OK, I can save that and then we can look back in our reporting and say, OK, 70% uh, of our callers are, are new customers and then they're raising 30% uh, of the time they're raising new, new requests. OK, so that's just to enrich the data available, but it's all available for the agents to do inside this My Sessions dashboard. OK, so I'll now move on to some of the queue management and reporting capabilities that we have in advanced enterprise routing out of the box. OK, so this is our My Services dashboard. You got a sneak peek of this this earlier. Um, so each queue that I'm a member of or each service that I'm a member of, OK, will appear here as a column. I can log in and out of these here um, so I can make myself active, inactive here. I can see immediately whether we've got enough capacity to handle the calls in, in these queues. So we can see we've got no callers in the queue here and no agents available. The reason that's red is because there's no one available. We can also see in the middle queue here, we've got seven callers in the queue and nobody available. So immediately we can tell we're potentially in trouble here and we need to get some people answering these calls. If we scroll down a bit here, this is what where we can see the Teams users associated with these queues. So these are all the Teams users associated with the queues. This is going to show me their state. And the way we determine their state is essentially by saying, are they available to take a call in the queue? So you can see here, I'm logged into the queue. I'm already on this call that means I'm not available to take a call okay as soon as I hang that call up that I was on you should see here that I become available okay so I've hung that call up and now I'm available to take that call everybody else here is inactive because they're all logged out of the queue as soon as I log people into the queue here they're showing is not available because they're now logged into the queue but they their team's presence is probably offline or on do not disturb which is why they're showing is not available here okay I've got supervisor access to this queue and what that enables me to do is actually override whether they're logged in or not. 
Okay, so if you want to give some of your users that supervisor access, it just means that if you're if you're busy or if you've got a high volume of calls and you quickly need to log people in, you can do that uh, just by activating these users in this in this queue. Okay, the middle queue here is is pretty much exactly the same. Um, I'm just a normal member of this queue. I can still see my colleagues uh, availability and presence. I can see whether they're logged into the queue or not. However, I don't have that supervisor override for this specific queue here, but we wanted to retain that visibility for all users. So in remote working and hybrid working environments, I can still see what my colleagues are up to. And it kind of mirrors teams in that respect that everybody can see everyone's uh, availability. Okay, so that's my kind of queue management um, dashboard there. Um, I'll now take you on to two wall boards or, or dashboards. Um, so the first dashboard to show you is the, the live dashboard. So each queue that you set up or each um, group that you set up within our platform with an enterprise routing license will immediately and automatically have a live dashboard. Okay, so there's no configuration required with these. So each queue that I have access to, I'll be able to see in the drop down here. So I'm going to look at the reporting queue because that has some live data running through it. And then we can see in real time here, how many calls do we have in the queue, the longest rated task, and how many calls do we have connected? So the left-hand side of this view is really to show you what's happening um, on the caller's side, okay? So in this table, we're gonna break that down in a bit more detail. So we can see we've got two callers in the queue here, uh, sorry, a few callers in the queue. We're gonna differentiate that between callers that are still in the IVRs, okay? So if callers are still going through the IVR menu options or listening to announcements, they'll be in that IVR state. And at the bottom here, we can see the connected calls, how long they've been connected for, and which agents they're actually connected to there, okay? So we've got that 360 view of the caller's uh, queue in, in real time. On the right-hand side, this is showing us more from a, a user perspective. So at the top here, again, we get that initial kind of high-level overview of, okay, how many people have we got logged in versus how many are actually available, okay? Um, and then within this table here, we can filter between these different agents. So we can say, okay, I just want to see the available agents at the top here. And I can see that uh, I myself have been available for just over four minutes there. Uh, but you can see the inactive users have been inactive for, for this amount of time. And we've got some not available users at the bottom there. Okay, so it's going to show us the present state in real time. Okay. So that's the kind of live overview in real time and then we have a uh, slightly more historical um, dashboard here um, which is going to show us um, some SLAs and some KPIs okay uh, for those queues so again we can filter at the top left there uh, between the relevant queues that we want to see so maybe let's have a look at the Swiss queue here um, this time So across the top here, we've got uh, things like reachability. So reachability is showing us as a percentage of calls that are coming in, how many are we answering? So we probably need to do a slightly better job there if we're only answering 51% of calls. We can set an acceptance SLA. What this allows us to do is essentially set a target to say, I want to answer all calls within uh, two minutes or five minutes. And then this will track how we're performing against that. <coughs> we can uh, track things like average queue time here. So we can see average queue time, average connected time. We can toggle these between different time periods. So if we want to see the last week or the last uh, day or the last 30 days, we can toggle between those time periods. And then within this bar chart here, this is giving us an insight as to the outcome of these calls, okay? So out of the calls that are coming in, where are those calls ending up, okay? Are they going to voicemail? Are they being hung up? If they are being hung up, where are they being hung up? Are they callers hanging up in the IVR because the IVR menus are too long? Are they hanging up in the queues because the queues are two times are too long? Okay, so we can really uh, dive into some detail here as to, okay, what are the outcome of these calls? Also on this dashboard, we have some user um, information. So we can see here the users who's accepting the most calls, declining the most calls. So um, Marcel here has quite a lot of Rona calls, which means he's probably ignoring quite a lot of his calls. So we can easily identify that and then try and rectify that. And then bottom right here, we have this heat map. So this heat map is going to show us some trends um, that are developing over, over the last four weeks. So if we look at uh, handled calls here, the larger green dots are when we're handling more calls. So these are essentially our busy periods, okay, or, or when we're handling calls. But perhaps more importantly, we can see 
when we're missing calls. So if you see large red dots uh, over lunchtime or after office hours, that's when people are calling in, but those calls are not being handled. So we can track that over the last few weeks and see are there any trends developing here? And then we can make some kind of scheduling or, or staffing kind of decisions based on th these trends. Okay. Hopefully that, that kind of covers the, the reporting side of things. Um, so I just wanted to finish off with our configuration um, side of things. So we want to make uh, Lua Nimbus as, as self-service as possible, both for our customers and our partners. Okay, so um, you've probably all been there where it's a bank holiday coming up or Christmas is coming up and then you think, okay, last minute, I'm going to send a ticket into the service desk to say, can you change uh, the opening hours or put an announcement on? So we want to remove all of that and basically give access to that to, 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 uh, to, to the customers, okay? Um, we're obviously not going to give access to, to everyone. So this is uh, based on different permission sets that users have. If you do have the correct permissions, you can come in here. Uh, you can upload audio files to a central place. So these can be things like music on hold files. Um, these can be announcements. Um, might be marketing messages we can combine those to make a playlist okay so um this is essentially uh, the, the the playlist that the customers will hear when they're waiting in the queue so this could be a combination of music with marketing message with um with an announcement here we can change our opening hours so if i go into our opening hours here this is one of the live schedules i can go in i can see my schedules i can move those around this is just a drag and drop calendar tool if I need to create a new schedule for, for a holiday period, I can go in here, give it a title, make it recur and start and end. And once I've um, built all of those, uh, built the opening hours and uploaded some resources, that will filters into our workflows, okay? So once I've built a workflow, it's very easy to actually copy and paste these workflows. These are essentially just the way that calls come in and the way they flow through the um, contact center. So once I've created one, I can copy and paste those if I have multiple groups with similar call flows. I'm gonna show you how we can create one very easily from, from scratch here and show you how easy this is to use. Okay, so we've got various templates, but I'm just gonna create this uh, from blank. So I've got a number of um, kind of conversation handling tools on the left-hand side here. So let's say that as soon as the caller comes in uh, to, to, to the number, I want them to go to an IVR. I can use the input uh, customer tool here. I can use Microsoft's um, text-to-speech tool, okay? So this is using cognitive services and we have over a hundred different languages we can use text-to-speech. So I could just uh, type in my prompt here and say, hello and thanks for calling. Please press option one for et cetera. So you can just type out your IVR prompts, option one for, for sales, option two for support, et cetera, or you can upload one of your own audio files there. If we turn these two off for the moment, I can then basically decide where, where I want my inputs to go. So I'm gonna say, okay, option one is going to our sales team, option two is going to our support team to make this very simple. When I minimize that, I can just draw out where I want these to go. So I'm gonna make a transfer here for my sales team. <clears throat> I'm gonna transfer this to one of the teams I built earlier going to send this over to our contact center so that will just go to a different workflow i can also send this out to an external number so if i want to um, send this out to an external call answering service that you might have or i can send this out to a, a specific user okay so i can just uh, search a user there and then support that me might be where i actually want to send it to a group of users that are logged in so that's where we send it to our queue Okay, so with the distribution type here, we can basically decide how we want to distribute that call. So the broadcast will ring everyone at the same time. Okay, so it's just first to pick up. Direct is going to just distribute based on longest idle. So whoever's been off the phone for the longest amount of time will distribute that call to that user first and then go work backwards. We can also do skills based routing with our contact center um, functionality. So if you, if you need skills based routing, that's something we can definitely do with our contact center license or we can set the queue to pick up. So this is where users can manually cherry pick the calls straight out of the queue. Next, we can basically decide, um, okay, how long is it gonna ring someone before giving up and ringing to the next person? That's our Rona timeout. So we can say, okay, I want it to ring someone for five seconds or, or 10 seconds before moving on. We can choose a queue timeout. So this is how long we're gonna actually allow a caller to wait in that queue before doing something else. 
and then we can choose our playlist. So once I minimize that, I can just decide what I, what I want to happen when that queue timeout is reached. So I might say, okay, after that queue timeout is reached, I want it to go to our sales queue uh, anyway. So I've just built a very simple workflow there. Um, there's probably some checks that I want to do at the start of this workflow. So I'm going to probably want to route by opening hours. So I can use this check opening hours tool here and say, this is what I want to happen when I'm open. But when I'm closed, I want to play an announcement saying I'm closed. Again, within that announcement, I can just decide how I want to play that announcement. I could upload a, a pre-recorded message there. And then after that announcement's played, I just want to send everything uh, to the voicemail. OK, so I can route very easily by opening hours there. Um, before sending it to this queue here, what I'm probably going to want to do is actually check the availability of users in this queue. And this is going to stop us sending calls to uh, queues that don't actually have anybody logged in. OK, so this is going to make those that call flow a lot more efficient and make that caller experience a lot smoother. So before sending it to this queue here, what I'm going to do is actually check if there's somebody available in that queue then I'm going to transfer it straight to that queue if there's somebody there waiting to take the call. If there's somebody in time available, which means they're all on the uh, uh, they're all on the phone, but there's people logged in, I can send it down here. Uh, but if nobody's available at all, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to send it to this queue because it will just time out. I'm actually going to send it over to the sales queue. OK, so I'm just putting in little checks and balances there to make sure that the cooler experience is going to be as, as, as good as possible, but also we're not sending calls to places where there's nobody logged in. The final, um, the final one that I'd like to show is just the check parameter here. So what this allows us to do is actually check um, parameters based in your CRM. So if we integrate one of your CRMs, what we can do is we can check the caller against the CRM. If they're recognized in the CRM, we can look up the specific field within that CRM and then make a routing decision based on that. So a common example of this might be VIP callers. If you have some VIP callers saved in your CRM and you want them to get a special treatment, what we can do is we can check for that, uh, whether that person is saved as a VIP in your CRM and then make a routing decision based on that. So if there's no um, match there or that that um, field isn't set in the CRM against that, that customer, then we can just route it down our normal route. But if they do actually match that check, then we might want to set up another queue here, which can be our VIP callers queue and send it over there, okay? So that, that person gets that special treatment and that doesn't have to go down the normal IVR route. There are lots of different use cases for this. If you have um, customer, uh, you might have an organization that wants to check whether a customer's balance is up to date. We can check that in the CRM and then make a routing decision based on that. Or um, in like a social care scenario where you've got, vulnerable, uh, you've got vulnerable patients and you want to recognize when they're calling in so they get a special treatment, okay? So um, that kind of wraps up uh, the different elements that I wanted to show. Thank you very much. Um, thanks, Oli, for the, for the demo. Nice to see the Nimbus Life in action. And thanks for everyone for attending.